Hi guys, and welcome back, or rather welcome, to an FM20 video. Now, what you're seeing on the screen right now is some footage I was able to capture, thanks very kindly to the folks over at Sports Interactive, who very kindly had me and a load of other FM content creators down to London for the weekend to have a look at the new game. Now, before we get into anything else, it's important to note, uh, firstly, obviously I'm recording this in post, so just bear with me a little bit. Uh, it was much easier for me to grab the footage, and I kind of went into this thinking, what would the people who watch my videos want to see and know about the new game? And that's kind of what you're going to get over the next three or four videos. Today, we're going to be talking mostly about the match engine, but I'll be dropping in some other little hint hints and stuff I've noticed over playing that. But this is mostly going to be about the match engine, and that's what you're mostly going to see. Now, this is just some goal of the month footage I was able to capture, just so you can sort of see the kind of goals that could be scored. Look at that or a boner there from, believe it or not, Ben Arthur, who is actually playing for uh, Cardiff in this game, it would seem. Uh, so yeah, look at that strike from Pushkas as well. It just looks quite nice. But yeah, most important thing is to sort of temper your expectations about what you're expecting about the game this year. I feel like this season, the game is very much built for long-term save players. That's And that's me. That's me in a nutshell, which is why I'm fascinated by it. Don't worry, there's still plenty of stuff in there that you're going to notice as a perhaps a player that only does one or two seasons with a big club, or even a small club for that matter. But I do think that a lot of the bigger changes, under the hood particularly, are going to be ones that will benefit people who like to play 10 season saves, or even 20, like I often do with Polonia and Stockport and so on and so forth, and hopefully we will do with Notts County this year. And that's because most of the things like the development center, that's something you're not going to notice until you're two or three seasons into a save. Like, it's as simple as that. However, there are things like the playing time pathway, which you will notice slightly sooner. The stuff with the, um, what's it called? The the club vision. That, again, something you'll be presented with right at the very start of the game. So, again, you will see that sort of stuff, but most of it, again, won't have much of an effect until further into the match. Now, one of the things that they have definitely done a lot of work on is the actual match engine itself under the hood. There's three things that I believe have been particularly changed this year. The attacking movement, the defensive positioning, and goalkeepers in general. Now, goalkeepers you might still see and look a bit iffy um, in what you're seeing right now, because, again, and it's, this has to be stressed, this is an early alpha. But, I mean, as you can see in the bottom corner, this is an early alpha version of the game. This is not what you're going to see in beta but look at the way that Fulham are playing the ball out from the back here that's not something you would have seen before and the way that the ball actually went to Mitrovic and he was actually able to bring it out of the air there's so much more the matches are much fun to watch I actually found myself engrossed in watching the matches even though I wasn't like immersed into a save because obviously I was just playing it to mess around and try some stuff out Fulham conceding a penalty in classic Fulham style but the matches are fun to watch because there's a lot more variation, it seems. Now, whether that's just because I'm not used to the quirks of the new game or whether that's just because that's how it's going to be going forward, I believe that's genuinely how it's going to be going forward because I didn't see a lot of repeating patterns. Uh, things like, you know, my biggest bugbear about FM19's match engine was the fullback thing where the ball would be lumped forward and a fullback would, instead of bringing it down or heading it to a teammate, would just lump it straight into the opposition's path. I didn't see that happen a single time through the entire weekend of me playing this game. Um... And that is a huge step in the right direction for me. Great goal there from Kiefer Moore. Unfortunately, Fulham going behind in classic Fulham fashion. And again, there's going to be little things that you'll see in here that are probably bugs. That's fine, though. That's not going to be in the release version of the game. Look at that little flick as well there. The, the animations in the 3D match engine as well are much, much smoother. They've done a lot of work with the animations to just make it look a lot better. And I really do think it does. And there's going to be a lot of examples that you're going to see over the next couple of matches I'm going to show you in this video that will make that very, very clear. Centre-backs as well. I feel like they're more likely to make little runs forward into space. Even if your tactic doesn't call for it, obviously they'll do it more if it does, but they will make those runs. Um, when a player gets to the byline to put a cross in, I found that more often than not, it would get blocked and go out for a corner. Even when you really thought that there was plenty of room to get the space uh, to get that cross in. Now that rarely seems to be happening. Players are making much more... In, um, correct and intelligent passes and also making more realistic looking mistakes is the other thing i say you will still see players make loads of mistakes but you'll be like yeah i've seen it happen tons and tons of times in real life it happens all the time it looks it's just much more fluid i feel like same with your hansen picking up the ball here goes to caviera they're driving it out of that central area read now watch this touch inside bam top corner from Harrison Reed. But the key thing for me is what this looks like when it's shown in the 3D replays for, of course, equalizer. You'll notice we're on the final day of the season here uh, with a chance to actually get promoted to the top flight. So there's that too. But what I want you to watch for is the way that Harrison Reed actually takes this finish on. The way that he opens up his body. So he's there, flips inside, opens his body out, and there's spews, spews? That's probably not the best word. Spews that one into the top corner to give us a nice equalizer there, which is very, very nice indeed. Fortunately, mucking ourselves up here. But again, good save from Bettinelli, tipping it wide of the post. Always very nice to see. The next thing you'll notice is the body language. We're, win we're at one all here, but you notice this player's motivated, apprehensive, nervous, composed. I found that there's way more variation in the body language of players, which fits much more realistically with how players would actually act in real life, because 
as uh, we managed to win a penalty here, or was it give a one away? I actually can't remember. I think we managed to give ourselves a penalty here. But yeah, the body language is much more varied, and that is hugely important for me, because again, players in real life don't always react the same way to every single situation. So now you could find yourself in a position where you're like 3-1 up in a game, perhaps. And you'll have a lot of players who are pumped up, fired up, or whatever. You get Some could be complacent, some could be composed, but you could still find players pretty nervous and apprehension, uh, apprehensive, and it will be much more noticeable because uh, things like there's more that will show up in red than they did before, which is quite just a useful fact as Fulham, unfortunately, go and concede ourselves another goal here. Bit of a goalkeeping error there from Marcus Bettinelli, but again, that sort of stuff happens. And not just with the... Um, the body language. That same kind of thing applies to the player ratings themselves. They are much more varied before. One of the problems I had before was that if you were winning a game, statistically, most of your players would either be getting good ratings or around about the same level, perhaps the goal scorer themselves would have a slightly higher level. Now, I mean, look at the variation in this. We're going to at two all. They've got a a right back who's oh, admittedly has got a couple of assists, but Charlie Mulgrew is on a six. Now, I believe that's because he made a mistake leading to a goal. This game here isn't the best example, but watch this for a finish as well. Sessignon grabbing the ball out on the right hand side, dropping it into Harrison Reed, and then Tom Kearney, bam, top corner. The satisfying feeling when that hits the crossbar and goes in off the goalkeeper or vice versa, I actually can't remember which, was absolutely fantastic. We only had four shots on target in this game, still managed to come up with three of them uh, going in the back of the net. But again, Harrison Reed picking the ball up and just rolls that across. And Kearney, first time strike with his left foot off the goalkeeper and the crossbar to give Fulham a nice little 3-2 victory away at Wigan, which is always very nice. The next game you're going to see was actually recorded earlier than this, which is why things will look a little bit different. Uh, for example, before I'd put the... Um the panels on the side of the pitch and all that sort of stuff. One thing you will notice about the 2D match engine, though, is that the stadium itself that you could often see has now actually gone. I don't know whether that's a, a thing you're going to see in the full release of the game or whether that's just something in this version. Um, and I'm kind of sad to see it go. But at the same time, it does give you the opportunity to have the pitch become bigger and you get to see a lot more. And again, the way that Steven Sessignon headed that ball out of play, I just have a feel, uh, a feeling that on FM19, he would have headed that back into the path of a defend uh, of an attacking player and all sorts of stuff like that. It feels like the defenders are way more intelligent, particularly with their jostling as well. Everything just feels like watching more real-life football, and that's all you can really ask for from this. And these are the kind of things that, for a player jumping straight in, that if you've played FM19 or 18, you will notice straight away. And that's kind of why I wanted to start with the match engine stuff, because it's all the, the, the glossy stuff that people see over and over. Watch the way the ball's rocked back there and tipped over by Bettinelli again there. It's just far more entertaining to watch. I can't really be any more clear than that. The other thing that you'll notice more as you play it is that defenders will also make more interceptions, but like not the kind of interceptions before where it's just cutting out a passing lane. They will dart in front of players way more, re make way more, and it looks so much more realistic because you do see that all the time. A player is waiting for the ball to come into their feet and the central defender will just nip in and pick the ball up. Before, they would rarely do that. And now I see it constantly. Not constantly, but like to the point where I'm like, yeah, that's something that would happen in real life. And that's always very, very nice to see indeed. I do love the warm-up screen. I was so pleased when they brought this in in recent years. So you'll notice in this one, once we get into the match, that there's no stadium uh, around the edge of the pitch, which means you've got the opportunity to have the pitch actually bigger. And I'm not really that bothered by it, but... I don't know. What do you think about that? Would you like to see the stadium back into the 2D match engine or not? You see the way Mitrovic dropped that ball back inside. Comes to Reed here. Great strike from Reed. Well saved by uh, Westwood. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this game against Sheffield Wednesday is because it's a prime example of the ability that you have seemingly to impose a tactical style, I believe, more, effic more efficiently uh, than you could do in recent years. Ball whipped in there, Forestier, and well, oh, wonderful save from Bettinelli. But if you want to play a sort of... I had Fulham playing vertical tiki tacker for this just so I could see what it looked like. But... If you want to play a certain style, and also you notice here the way that Palmer drops this ball into Bannon, immediately gets it back, the passing just feels much more fluid, and I'm a huge fan of that, but I, I digress. What I mainly wanted to say is that if you want to impose a certain tactical style, you have that ability, I believe, more so than you've ever had before. You could try and play a style and have all the instructions, as Mitrovic is going to miss this one here, unfortunately, but... It would only really go so far. You can see here, we've got a huge amount of possession, much like Fulham do in real life. We're playing a very similar style to how Fulham play in real life, but we've got more of a deep line playmaker uh, in this particular formation. But the key thing, as again, you can see the body language, very, 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 despite the game being nil-nil. Sheffield Wednesday's players having a very different time amongst each other here. But... Players like Maxim Lamarchon in this tactic that we play in this match were able to, I think he completes 127 passes in this match, which is an awful lot, but you can just see the way they pick up the ball. They're not touching it miles out in front of them. Adoy, again, you'll see in several of the clips against Sheffield Wednesday here that Dennis Adoy, who is playing at centre-back in this game, will pick up that ball and will drive into the middle of the park on multiple occasions. When he finds that little gap, and as you can see, again, it's nil-nil, yet Adoy and Lamarchon are on huge ratings. Joe Bryan's on huge rating, uh, as is Burner for Sheffield Wednesday. It just feels like 
you're getting a much more realistic representation of not only the match, but the actual rating surrounding that. And you can see that Forestieri is on a 6.2 in this game. Not because he's had any chances, but because he's just done nothing. And it's not just about missing chances. Again, Sessnion whipping a nice little low cross in there for Mitrovic, varying things up. The players will do that as well a lot of the time. Brian driving forward, dropping through on to Kearney, who again will drive at the defenders and then roll it around the side. Read, you know, not every time a ball goes near a defender will it immediately be cut out by them. Sometimes it will go through their legs and that might get annoying after a while. But again, you can see Dennis Adoy driving into the wide areas with the ball. When again, before, I feel like he would have either just passed that ball back to the goalkeeper maybe or probably lost it, let's face it. I don't know how this is going to scale down as Adoy again drives into the centre of the pitch because obviously at lower levels, you're going to need to have some kind of um, tapering off of the quality. And I don't know how well that's going to be represented. But that remains to be seen. Uh, I did have a little look with Stockport and it still looked pretty damn good. That You could see where the mistakes were being made, but it wasn't amazing. What I would also say, though, is that Maxim LaMarche on 127 passes. And I just don't think I would have had a player, particularly not a centre-back, doing that kind of thing on FM19. Now, obviously, you might not always want to play like that. You might want to play more tick, uh, more long ball, which is fine. You get that ability. But I feel like you've got more choice this year round. So, more videos coming up. Do not worry. I've got some more stuff to do with the beta coming up. My, my plans for it, indeed. And, uh, yeah, so if you've enjoyed this little look at things, apologies, it's been a bit disjointed in places with my commentary. It's quite hard to commentate over old footage. I've had a couple of goes at this, so hopefully this is the best one. But, yeah, drop a like. We've got some more stuff to do with youth intakes. Very, very important. I've done a whole video about that, as well as all sorts of other stuff, including regen faces. I've done some stuff about that, too. So I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.